John chapter 8, John chapter 8. What page is it on in our Pew Bibles? 1142. I'd like to all see you open the Bible. We've got Bibles for everybody. Open the Bible and follow along. It won't hurt you. John chapter 8. 1140, did you say? 1143. 1143. Jesus went unto the Mount of... 1143 in the Bible. We've got two Bibles there for you. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. You see, Jesus was a teacher, uh, he, the, 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 and, he, and he taught the Word of God. Don't ever forget that. He, ta he taught the Word of God. And uh, what, uh, what kind of Word of God did, did Jesus have to teach from? What did he have? He had the Law and the Prophets. He had the Old Testament. He had the Law of Moses, and he had the Prophets, and he had the Old Testament. The, the New Testament was just, you know, he was being part of the New Testament being uh, written. So um, uh, what he had was the Old Testament. So it said he was he was taught them what the Old Testament. Can, can, can you and I, some people say, well, we're New Testament Christianity is the Old Testament. Oh, yeah, the, the, New, the Old Testament is just as important as the New Testament. Yeah, the Bible, 66 books, Genesis 1 to Revelation 22. It's all important. It's all the Word of God. And, and, and don't put one emphasized over the other. Now, we are New Testament Christians, and, and yet, but some, I've even got some preacher friends that they, uh, uh, they're all hung up, and, and uh, uh, they just believe that the teachings of Paul are important, his letters. And they major on that, and they say they, they don't even just say the Old Testament is important. They don't even believe uh, that the Gospels are very important. It's all that we should be teaching and practicing is the is the letters of Paul. Well, they're they're misinformed. They're misguided. Uh, every bit of the Word of God, from Genesis one to the end of Revelation twenty two, is important. So Jesus taught. Um, um, what did he teach them? The Old Testament, didn't he? And it was that the Old Testament talked about him, didn't it? Because he says Moses and the prophets talked about him, about Jesus Christ. Verse three. Uh, and the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her uh, in the midst, they say unto him, Masters, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Well, you see, adultery, uh, that isn't something just uh, common to our day. Uh, we've got people come in here every day that are adulterers and adulteresses. Uh, we've got, coming in our church, we've got prostitutes. Uh, that walk the streets and uh, we've also uh, listen to this we've also got prostitutes that don't walk the streets but uh, they prostitute to have a roof over their head and food on their table uh, that's a prostitute uh, you're just as bad uh, if you give your body up for sex to have a roof over your head which many women do and and and, and they think that that's formidable, that that's okay to do. They'll do that, but oh, they say, oh my, look at them girls on Ridgewood walking down uh, uh, Ridgewood selling herself. You're selling yourself too. You ain't no better. Kind of getting close to home now, isn't it, folks? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that the truth, John? That's the truth. So, uh, uh, so, but it ain't nothing new. They had prostitutes. They had adulterers and adulteresses there in the New Testament. You don't think this is, ah, you're old-fashioned. I'm just teaching the Bible. I'm just teaching you what it is. There's people sitting in there right now. You shacked up last night. God help you. You don't even think nothing of it. You said, yeah. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. When they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. And now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? Okay, so in the Bible, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, you're lucky that uh, you're lucky that the penalty for adultery today isn't stoning, because we'd have a bunch of uh, bodies uh, out here on the, uh, on the curb, dead, uh, from the trailer park where you live over there, uh, Vic, uh, Victor. Yeah, Victor. From the trailer park, and and uh, Barbara and Victor live over there, and from uh, uh, 
Victor, I, I got two Victors here, and the other Victor that owns, that owns a motel across the street. <clears throat> Sad to say, but there might be some, there might be some people commit adultery in your motel. I know they do. You do too, because you rent a motel and and you can't, you know. They say, well, this is this is my wife or this is my daughter or this is whatever. The old the old codgers they come and say it's their daughter, you know, and uh, they go into Victor's uh, motel and commit adultery. So um, they'd be uh, they we'd have dead bodies from the trailer park. We'd have dead bodies from the motel, and we'd have dead bodies from... My, am I telling the truth or not? I mean, if people were stoned for adultery today and fornication, uh, we'd have all kinds of bodies piled on Ridgewood out there. Am I telling the truth or not? You say, that don't mean... Oh, yeah, it does mean something. It means something to God. You think you can live by, cat, live by cats and dogs and get away with it with God? <laughs> this they said, tempting him. That he might have to accuse him. See, they wanted to. You see, uh, there's accusers of Christ today, just like there. People always accuse Jesus. They always accuse me as a gospel preacher. If you're going to stand up for the gospel, you're going to be accused. People are going to trip you up. I've got a lot of enemies. I know it. I got a lot of enemies. I was talking to my wife about it this morning. I said, I got a lot of enemies, honey. She said, I wish you didn't have so many. I wish you didn't either. I, but I, I know who my enemies are. You say a Christian shouldn't have any enemies. If you're a real Christian, you'll have a ton of enemies. If you're a real Christian, they hated Jesus, and they hated what he did, and they hate what you do. I just, people say, how can you say, how can you say someone, I know when someone's my enemy. I got all kinds of enemies. I know who they are. Because of the way they believe and they hate Jesus. So if they're an enemy of Jesus Christ, are they going if they persecuted the master, will they persecute you and I? Huh? Would they, Nathan? You think so? I guess so. You guaranteed. Amen. That's guaranteed. You don't want to have enemies, do you? I don't either. But if you're for Christ and they're not, they're going to be your enemy and they'll come out against you. Verse 7. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Wow, wasn't that good? I texted that out yesterday. That was my yesterday's text. I texted it out from John 8 today again. I texted it out to some of you. you you've got a, a cell phone that gets text. I'll take, I text over 200 people every day. If you want to be on that list, I'd be glad to put you on there. Some of you are. I haven't done all my texting today, but I, I've texted a lot of it. Uh, he that is without sin among you, uh, let him uh, first cast a stone at her. We're all sinners, aren't we? Huh? Uh, how, many, how, many, how many of you ever thought wrong? How many of you ever done wrong? Yeah. We can't cast a stone at anybody, can we? Because we, we're the same. You ain't no better than anybody. Like that guy to come in and mission over at 425 next door over here. He come in, he whispered in my ear. He says, Pastor Varga, Pastor Varga, uh, I ain't like these folks you got in here. Ooh. He wanted to tell me he's better than than my low life people that are in here. Listen, let me tell you something. We're all low life. He said, How dare you call me low life? Because the Bible says, You say I'm a good person. There ain't nothing good about you. The heart of man is desperately wicked. Who can know it? I'm sick and tired of you folks coming in here, and there's some of you maybe sitting in here right now going to tell me about how good you are. Oh, shut up. You ain't so hot. You got a wicked heart. How dare you say you're a good person? Think of all the filthy things you think about and all the hateful things you think about in your mind, and not only do you think them, you've played a lot of them out in your life. Am I telling the truth or not? And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience. Is your conscience convicting you today? Mine is. Yeah. Yes, Mine's telling me I'm not so hot. If yours ain't telling you you're not so hot, there's something wrong. You have a seared conscience. 
You think you're good. You think you're important. You think you're better than others. And you're full of baloney. Being convicted of their own conscience. God's given us a conscience. Went out one by one. And beginning at the eldest, that's me, Doris is the eldest, she'd be walking out first, then me. Beginning at the eldest, even until the last, and Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. And when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Jesus speaking now, John 8, 10, Woman, where are thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? Verse 11. She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said in here, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. You see, how can you lose the condemnation? How can you become uncondemned? Anybody got any answers? How can you, how can you come in the presence of Jesus and become uncondemned? How, how can you do that? You got any ideas, Joanne? What do you think? You have to repent, yeah. Yeah. Get off your high horse and thinking you're better than folks. Don't you folks come to me. Folks that are sitting in here right now, some of you, I ain't going to name you. I don't want to embarrass you, but you ought to be embarrassed. You come to me railing on someone else in our church, telling me stuff about it. Why don't you just shut up and look in the mirror? Yeah. Huh? Why don't you shut up and look in the mirror? You holier than I. What you got, John? I ain't getting all what you're talking about, but but let me just get. I'm sorry because I I got time uh, constraints here. I appreciate your thought, but 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 we got to remember that we're all sinners, and and in order to be uncondemned, condemned means I go to hell. Uncondemned means I'm going to heaven. You know it is. I'm, I'm gonna make a, a video on it, a short video. But but right now. Did you, did you see on television where hell is coming up out of the ground in Hawaii? Have you seen it on television? That's hell. That's the fires of hell. It's coming up right now out of the ground. You say, what are you talking about? Hell's in the center of the earth. Yeah. God opened the earth in the Old Testament. He opened the earth up and uh, several families there, Abiah and uh, uh, several other families, he told the other folks, get away from them. He opened up the earth, and they fell into hell. The leaders, the men that led the family, all of his children, and everything that they, it said everything that pertaineth to them fell into hell. You, see what you mean you think, you think hell's in the middle? I know it's in the middle of the earth. I don't care what you think. You can even you can even look at the History Channel, the Worldly History Channel, and they've got a two-hour program on there called The Gates of Hell. You put it up on YouTube and look at it. That ain't even Christian. There is a hell, and I'm supposed to be condemned to hell because of my sins, and so are you. And unless you give your heart to Christ and repent, keep on going, liquor like a river, smoke your marijuana cigarettes. Take your artificial K2, it'll kill you. Right, Calvin? Am I telling the truth, Calvin? K2 will kill you. Yeah. Yeah. I hope you're not a dope head. I hope you're an ex dope head. And if you're a drunk, you're a dope head. Someone told me the other day Why'd you say someone's a dope head? Because they're a dope head. Do you know? I know they're dope head. <laughs> if it's a pig, it's a pig, it's a pig. Amen? Huh? If you're dope head, you're dope head, you're dope head. 
If you sex pervert, you sex pervert, you sex pervert. You say, who's a sex pervert? I ain't in that. Yes, you are. If you shacked up last night, you sex pervert. Anybody that's not married, David's got it made up here now. Him and Lisa got married. Was it about eight, ten years ago now? Nine years ago, I married David and Lisa. They used to be sex perverts, and they got convicted. They said, we ain't going to shack up no more. We're going to get married. And they have been married all this time. Amen. Important part of our church. Helpers. God bless. How about you? Was you rustling wicked skirts last night? Yeah, get the smile off your face. And and you better get you better get a conscience. Well, so I'm a child of God. Well, start living like a child of God. Quit living like the scum of the earth. <clears throat> if you're for Christ, start living like it. I'm a little tired of all this foolishness. We're going we're gonna to memorize the Bible. Memorize them books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua. I know them all. Memorize Psalm 1. Blessed is a man walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, and, uh, and his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth or she doeth shall prosper. That's what I want. Memorize it. Read the Bible. Fill your life with it. Our church is full of Bible ignoramuses. Christianity in general in America is Bible ignoramuses. People in other parts of the world, in third world countries, they can hardly read or write. They know the Bible. We that are supposed to be so literate and so educated, we're Bible illiterate. And most of you sitting in here are. You don't even know the books of the Bible. You don't have memorized any scripture. The only Bible you get is when you come in here and I tell you what page to turn to. I'm glad you're getting something. I hope you get saved. You say, I'm saved. Well, start acting like you're saved then. Start studying your Bible. Start quitting living, quit living like heathen. And someone says, I'm worried about you, Pastor. Uh, uh, you've been wilder in your prayer. I'm going to get wilder yet because I ain't got much time left. And i got to snatch some folks out of hell. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you say. I'm a Bible preacher. I'm old-time religion, and I ain't quitting. You go your way, do whatever you want. What verse am I on? Verse 8? Huh? What verse am I on? 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I am the light of the world. Isn't it wonderful? I'm the light of the world. Remember what we used to sing in Sunday school? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. That's the light of Jesus. Shine all over Milwaukee. That's where I used to have it shining. Now it's shine all over Daytona Beach. I used to sing it in front of... Hundreds, yeah, thousands of Sunday school children in, in Milwaukee. Shine all over Milwaukee town. Bunch of precious little children. Many of them got saved. I used to shine the light. I'm trying to shine the light here. I haven't got a bright light here in Daytona Beach as I did in Milwaukee, but I'm praying I will have. I'm praying for a revival here. Amen? Amen. Why don't you play for a revival with me? Let's see some revival. Amen? Amen. Yeah. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And the Pharisees, the, the Christ haters, the rejectors, as we have today all around us, the Pharisees, verse, said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. So they were against him. Jesus answered, verse 14, John 8, 14. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I, I know whence I came. He knew he came from heaven. And whether I go, he's going to go back to heaven. Amen. And you cannot tell whence I came and whether I go. Verse 15, he tells these wicked, uh, Christ-hating, God-rejecting uh, Jews. 
Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. Verse 16, And yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I and my Father that sent me. Verse 17, John 8, It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. So here we've got the witness of the Father, Heavenly Father, witnessing of the Son, and also remember the Holy Ghost, the third person of the Trinity, they're always three doing, they're always together. One God, three persons. Amen? I've got God today. I fellowship with Him because I'm born again. If you do, if you're born again, you have the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. They three are one. Verse 19, Then say they unto him, Where is thy Father? Jesus answered, Listen to this, Ye neither know him, ye neither know me, nor my Father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. Now listen, these fools that say there are many ways to God. I seen a guy on, a, on the television the other day. Uh, uh, he was uh, uh, some so-called preacher uh, preaching at that uh, royal wedding over there in, in Britain. He talked about how oh, the whole world coming together and hugging each other, and he talked preaching about love. It all sounds good, and we're all going to love one another and sing Kumbaya. That's a bunch of baloney. The only true love there is is the love of God. The only love of God there is is found through Jesus Christ. You ain't going to have a bunch of Muslims and and uh, Hindus and witches and Mormons and Jehovah Witness and every wicked cult and every wicked ungodly religion on the face of this world come together and hug one another and sing Kubaya and have the love of God. All the way you can have the love of God is through Jesus Christ. It all sounded good, and I saw him on the television all these. He says, what a wonderful, this preacher preach about the love of God. We all need to love each other and hug each other. It ain't going to happen, Charlie. It ain't going to happen, Susie. You can't have love unless you have Jesus. Yeah, you can't have love. You can't, you can't have the Father. You can, they say, well, Pastor you're so narrow. Yeah, narrow is the way, and few there are that find it. Most folks are going to hell because they don't have Jesus. They say, why is the road to destruction? Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, witches, atheists, communists, you name them. You name all these godless religions and sects. It's Jesus Christ. Jesus saith, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I'm going to stick with Jesus, and I'm going to heaven. You say most folks don't believe that way, and they're going to hell. And many of them call themselves Christians. They're not Christians at all. They have a false Christ and a false Jesus. Yeah. What do you say now? Oh, I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> You're going to get into that. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the Bible in John chapter 8 and Jesus the light of the world woman caught in adultery in the very act yeah a lot of that going around here on Ridgewood Avenue we can't point a finger they all walked out as sinners because their conscience got them does your conscience get in you today are you a sinner I am now, I'm a saved sinner. I was born again April 4th, 1969. I pray you'd get saved today. You say, I know I'm saved. I'm a born-again Christian. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. No one's looking around. If you know you're saved and headed for heaven, you know you're born again, slip your hand up. I've got about half my audience here. You may put your hands down. About half the people in my church this morning know they're saved. Half don't. How about you out there on Facebook? I don't know. I'm glad I'm saved. You've raised your hand. I hope you're saved. But if you're not, you can be saved today. Is your conscience getting you? Showing you your sin? Would you repent and turn from your sins? And if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. 
And the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Would you call upon God right now? This is a prayer. Pray this sinner's prayer with me. Confess your sins, repent, and be born again like I did April 4th, 1969. Pray this sinner's prayer now and be saved. This is a prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me. You shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross and rose from the grave the third day. The best I know how with an honest heart, I turn from my sins, receive you as my Savior. Thank you for saving me right now. If you've done that today here in church, heads are bowed, eyes are closed, no one's going around. You said I've never really been saved, but I prayed and asked the Lord to save me today. Would you slip your hand up, anybody in the church? Yes, yes, God bless you. God bless you, Lord, thank you. Thank you for those here, and I hope there's been someone out there in Facebook. Thank you for the food you provided for us, dear Lord. Bless us. Give us, a, uh, give us a day testifying of thee, we that are saved. And I pray the conscience of these lost sinners that are here in our church today. They turn to Christ and be saved as you continue to work in their hearts and those out in Facebook. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.